Give us a sense here, uh, Katanga, first as to what this is right now. Are we talking about this is just an idea that is it coming out of Yellen's head or is this something actually being put to paper and they're ready to try to move forward with it? This is certainly an actual blueprint that the regulators will vote to adopt on today. All of Biden's financial regulators, including heads of the Treasury, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Federal Reserve, and others. And what this blueprint, these powers, allow for the regulators to do is to assess whether a firm, not just its activity, um, but a particular firm may be engaged in activities that may be systemically important, and regulators will be able to uh, sort of say to that firm, hey, we demand you to provide more data, more details, a better understanding of your balance sheet, certain risks um, that, that you face, uh, so that we can assess whether all of that combined poses a risk to the financial system. Um, to, you know, before this particular authority uh, is granted to regulators, they, they were only able to, from a distance, um, assess whether a particular activity or a sector's mm. uh, behavior was systemically important. Now, today, this gives them the opportunity to really look at a particular firm. And so this blueprint, this is one step in the process. Give us a little bit of a sense of the timeline from here, from when this goes to blueprint into actual oversight. As early as next week, regulators could begin, each individual financial regulator could begin to study firms that fall under their purview, and they can make recommendations to the FSOC uh, to potentially uh, designate a particular firm. But even before that firm is given this too big to fail label, regulators would have to, as a panel, um, maybe, you know, the last time the, the FSOC did this, it took about a year and a half to designate a firm. But there is an engagement about understanding the submissions that firms will make yeah. as as well as sort of giving that firm an opportunity to defend itself even after it's considered uh, systemically important. So it's it's a lo long way here before firms are actually given the tie. Uh, just, just one last quick question here, Katanga, because I, I am curious, earlier this year, I think it was in either March or May, uh, when the uh, when the Financial Stability Council put, oh, I'm sorry, when the Fed uh, put out that report about systemic risk, and they devoted a lot of time in that report to talk about private capital and the systemic risk that it posed, and it very definitively, and I should point out, this was a staff report, but it very definitively said that it did not find any systemic risk. They said that the industry was still too small and not as quite intertwined with intertraditional banks to pose a threat. Has anything changed between now and then? It's interesting. We know that the FSOC has a particular panel, a task force that's focused on hedge funds, one that's focused on non-bank mortgage servicing, and that's just at the panel level. Individual regulators have been studying these issues around private credit um, and particularly looking at, well, you know, which of the firms uh, that could potentially be the most risky mm -hmm. and how do we wrap our hands around them. It's too soon to say exactly what those studies and findings since this report has been published are, uh, but we know that the power Hours today allows the agencies to go full steam ahead and looking even deeper, yeah. right? And kind of understanding, well, maybe that was the case then. Has that changed? And yeah. maybe even more regularly requiring firms to disclose to the regulators themselves. 